Hey guys, welcome to lesson two. In this lesson, we're gonna go through the Google Keyword Planner. Now, first of all, I'm going to go through just a few slides to just give you a basic overview of what it is and how it works. Then, after I go through the slides, I'm gonna jump into the tool itself and we're gonna walk through an example step-by-step step so you know how to use it and you can just follow right along with your own business and the campaign that you're setting up. So first of all, here's what we use Google Keyword Planner for. Number one, we use it to search for new keyword ideas. So, you know, we're not just geniuses and dream up all these amazing keywords in, you know, the very first phase. We actually go to Google, Google Keyword Planner and a few other places as well for ideas. Um, and we type in like just different websites and phrases to help um, just brainstorm all the different possible keywords that we could um, potentially target. We also use it to get search volume data and trends for keywords that we already have in mind. So if we know we want to go and look for um, how much search volume is out there on the keyword um, dentist, then we can go out there and specifically look that up. Then another thing that we want to do is try to, we can use it for um, getting new keywords from existing lists. So if we want to, uh, if we already have a list that we're using, um, maybe it's in your account or maybe you're, you're using it for SEO or something like that, you can copy and paste the keyword list into Google Keyword Planner and it'll help you get some new keywords and find some new keywords related to what you're already targeting. Um, and then the, the last thing you can use it for, which is really fun, is forecasting click and cost performance. Um, so basically you can get, you know, historical data from this, you know, this Google Keyword Planner. Um, and that historical data is literally based on Google's 12-month history. Now you can change the history to the past six months or different increments there, but it's literally based on what has happened on Google um, for the past, um, you know, different year period or six months period. So there's a lot of different cool things that you can do, um, obviously, and it saves you a lot of time, um, especially in the brainstorming process. So it's really, it's really a great um, tool overall. And one thing that I will say is that you know it's not always perfect. Um, it's definitely an estimation. It's not exact, and of course, no one. Even Google itself can predict the future, so just please keep in mind that these are only estimators and it's really great for just helping you plan. So don't go crazy with your keyword research. You don't want to get too broad. You don't want to go too crazy with like coming up with hundreds and hundreds of keywords. Um, you just want to start by writing down the most obvious ways that you think that people would search for your client's products and services. If you start with way too many, or you get too broad, you can literally just blow through all of your budget. So I want you to just remember when you're first starting out to just stay focused, stay, stay small, and stay targeted with your keywords. Um, you can always come back later and add in more keywords. Um, so don't worry too much if the volume for a specific keyword is low. If the volume's under a thousand a month, the tool, it, it just starts getting really imprecise. So I'm just gonna give you that word of warning now when we jump into the tool, um, is that even if it says there's zero or 10 or 50, you can still get um, a decent amount of clicks from those keywords. Um, also, when you're planning your budget and forecast, just keep in mind that these numbers are for mature accounts. So brand new accounts, when you if you are just now setting up your account and it's completely brand new, your bids, just please expect your cost per click to be higher right out of the gate. And over time, they will get, uh, they will more normalize. So they'll get, um, you know, less expensive. But we have found from the hundreds and hundreds of accounts that we've run through our agency that every single time we set up a brand new account, not campaign, but account, um, that the costs per click are always a little bit higher. So the costs that you'll see typically are for those more mature accounts. And then, just to give you an idea of where to start with your brainstorming, um, you can go to your website, your client's website, competitor's websites, um, you can just brainstorm on your own, or you can even use the related searches, if you guys have seen that at the very bottom of a Google search page. Um, you can use the terms that are entered in there uh, when you do a search for your main keyword. It'll give you a whole bunch of like related searches. That's a really helpful place to go as well. Um, but just to give you, you know, some a word of caution here before we dive in, um, these estimating tools, they're not, they're not exact scientific calculations. 
Um, so don't rely too heavily on the exact numbers when you're using the planner. Really just use it as a way to help your help you get organized. Um, but just to give you a little background, the, the way that Google actually calculates this thing, um, it's driven by these things like I call them number buckets. Um, so for instance, if the phrase personal injury attorney produced like 1,500 monthly searches, the actual number could be several hundred more or several hundred less. So if this phrase is searched enough to far exceed the 1,500 fr threshold, then it's probably gonna like bump it up to the next search bucket, which is a number like 2,200. You know, it, so it's not exact, it's just, it groups them into buckets. And that's why you won't see numbers on there like, you know, 2,562. It's not exact and it, it, it does a lot of rounding. And the lower volume that you're dealing with, so if you're like hyper local, the lower volume keywords can literally show up as having zero traffic or having 10 searches a month or something like that, um, but you can still get decent amount of traffic. So please don't rely on these numbers as the end all be all. Um, it's just not going to um, be super accurate for you. Um, but like I said, at small volume, it really, uh, really tends to be pretty inaccurate. Um, and another thing you can do is to use some alternative keyword research tools. I've used these four um, in addition to the keyword planner. Now I'm not gonna necessarily go into each of these four in depth, but I do encourage you to explore these. Um, there's keywordtool.io, there's SEMrush, which is a really popular one, SpyFu, which is really cool, it has some cool features, like you can spy on your competitors and see you know, what kind of AdWords activity they have going on. Um, and then of course WordStream is a great tool as well. So those are some alternative keyword research tools that you can use and explore if you're not happy with the keyword planner. But for right now, we're gonna actually go ahead and switch over and jump right into the tool itself and I'll walk you through how to use it.